Welcome everyone to my living room. I'm Abel James and we're here with Jonathan Baylor. Welcome, good sir. It's Abel, I am I'm sitting on Abel James's couch right now. I'm it's a little I'm like we're 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 next to we're usually two thousand miles apart when we talk and we're less than two inches apart right now. But well, actually I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been joking with a production crew that it looks like we're dangerously close to making out. So. <laughs> Cheers to that. Well, why That's are we here? Explain to these folks what exactly we're doing. I, I'm, I'm incredibly excited and honored to be in your house, Abel. We wanted to, Abel and I have had some just wonderful, wonderful conversations over the past year. But as you know, with, with this wonderful nutrition world, there's people all around the world that are getting dialed into this lifestyle. And yeah. we're all talking over Skype and we just thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could make a bit more of an intimate one-on-one -on -one time, not only between us, but but also with the wonderful fans yeah. and viewers out there so that we could get a little bit more personal, a little bit more intimate and share a, a little bit less sound bites and a little bit more like, what are we doing? What are our struggles? Mm -hmm. And, and we've also, you've done an excellent job garnering questions from all around the world and hopefully addressing some of those in a very novel and uh, fun setting. So I'm, I'm really yeah. excited about it. Yeah, me too. Uh, and it's so cool. We were talking about this before we turned the cameras on, but about how on our shows, on our podcasts and on our blogs and that sort of thing. A lot of times what we do is talk to other experts in the field yeah. and celebrities and models and bodybuilders and sometimes regular Joe or James. But what we don't really get the chance to do is talk about how we live our own lives. Exactly. So that's why I think it's so cool that instead of being in some fancy schmancy studio, we're literally on my couch. <laughs> I thought it was so cool that you asked for that to happen because yeah, it, yeah. it changes the energy of the whole conversation and makes it much more like rubber meets the road. This is what we're having for dinner. We were actually talking about this too. Um, some of the crew brought a bunch of snacks over and Jonathan's like, is this yours? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I feel really like comfortable having you here, like looking through what is in our fridge, yeah. you know, like what is, what is uh, in my supplement cabinet yeah. and, and yeah. what, how do we actually live? And so that's what we're yeah. going to be sharing with you guys. And we're really excited to do that. One of the biggest struggles is eating healthy on the road Absolutely. and what to do to uh, maintain your sanity when you're on the road as yeah. well and like maintain this lifestyle. So we have a show and tell. We absolutely prepared. do. And, and now you will know that this is this was not pre-scripted. In fact, obviously, both Abel and I travel a lot. And I traveled, for example, here to Abel's house. So I have my actual suitcase. And I did not pre-plan this. So my apologies if... Well, 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 hopefully that goes pretty well when we open up my suitcase and see what's inside. But we also have a great selection here. So um, maybe we could go over what we got on the table and then we'll bust open the suitcase. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So let's start with, I mean, you don't have to be in an airport or anywhere else to use these snacks. It could just be something that you have at home. But the good thing about these particular snacks is that they're really easy to take on the go and they don't tend to spoil very quickly. So Absolutely. these are things that we always have on hand when we're traveling. Um, and even when we're not, it's just something that we constantly stock up. Uh, but before we get to that, why don't we get to what most people do yeah, when they're on the point. road? And uh, the worst place you could ever get food is a convenience store yes. or a gas station or an airport. Those yep. are pretty much <laughs> the yeah. worst places on Absolutely. earth if you want to uh, maintain your health. So what a lot of people do is they'll get something you know, on the way to the airport or from the airport itself, like a pastry. And what we have here is just a muffin. It yep. looks like a banana muffin to me. And and this is the the banana. The thing you'll notice the common denominator between everything we'll show you, which is what to steer away from, is exactly what we talked about in other segments, which is it's going to be heavy in starch, it's mm -hmm. going to be heavy in sugar, and it's going to be heavy in fat. And again, we talked about fat not being bad for you, but fat when combined with starch and sugar, and also the fat that is used in these types of processed products is a nightmare. And you'll see basically the exact opposite when we show you what to eat. Mm -hmm. They will be low in starch, they will be low in sugar, and for the fat, fattier options, they're going to be healthy, natural fats. Yeah. So, And here's the problem with, with this, is that even though calories in and of themselves aren't really the things <clears throat> that matter, eating this, which probably has, I would estimate it has between four and 600 calories, because mm -hmm, it's probably mm -hmm, packed mm -hmm. with sugar, packed with the wrong kinds of fat, yep. loaded with grains, but... You might feel full after you eat it um, immediately, yeah. But about thirty minutes, an hour, certainly two hours later, you're going to be ravenous because your insulin is flooding, your blood sugar is sky high, and then crashing. And you're going to want to eat again, yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of better options um, that you can have to curb your hunger 
um, and satiate you so you don't have to go screaming to something like this. And what to Abel's point of, you know, we don't want to worry about calories. It's not about counting calories. But what you'll find is when individuals eat these edible products that are heavy in sugar and starch, and this has been proven in, in clinical studies, the amount of calories it you have to eat to feel full mm -hmm. because these aren't satisfying is astronomical. Basically, yeah. to feel full on the wrong kinds of food or non-food, you have to overeat. Literally, that was to Abel's point yesterday of a can of tuna fish versus this sugary beverage. The can of tuna fish makes you feel full. The sugary beverage, yeah. same number of calories. So again, it's not that calories are unicorns and they don't exist. They do exist. Yeah. But when you eat the right kinds of foods, you never have to worry about them. If you eat the wrong kinds of edible products, you will, you will overconsume calories and yeah. therefore gain fat. Here is another super common snack that people bring on the road or just have around, which is a granola bar. And so this one isn't really marketed to be super healthy. I mm -hmm. think people would pick this up as a treat. It's naturally and artificially flavored. Wonderful. It's chocolate chunk. Usually what you get, whether it's one of these ones that's just kind of a nice little treat, yep. or whether it's something that's marketed to be super healthy, full of whole grains, yes. low in fat, yep. uh, even low in sugar. Yep. Uh, it's still fundamentally the same thing as this sugary granola bar or a Snickers bar yep. or a muffin or a cake. These are all things that spike your blood sugar. They're heavy in carbs. They're sugary. It's garbage. Um, it's not something that's going to curb your hunger. Absolutely you just kind not. of think that it does for the for yeah. the moment that you're eating it. And Abel, if I just highlight one thing yeah. here. So as a couple of general rules, so I'm going to borrow, these are both from Michael Pollan, which if you haven't read his books, you absolutely should. Mm -hmm. Anything that makes health claims, like if it's yeah. in a box or a bag or packaging and it makes health claims, run the other direction. A, a good example of this, I saw an ad in a magazine the other day, which is like this product, not this product, but a product mm -hmm. has as much protein as one egg. Yeah. And they were like, oh my gosh, that means it has a lot of protein. Well, <laughs> I think it's six or seven grams. Yeah, it's six or seven grams. Which isn't that much. That is not that much. And why not just get that from an egg in the first yeah. place? The other rule of thumb, so health claims are bad, is if the ingredients list is a paragraph long, mm -hmm. it is not healthy. Like just just stop. It is not healthy if the yeah. ingredients list is that long. A, a better you know protein whole food that is convenient like a sardines or like an anchovies or like mm -hmm. a can of tuna or a can of clams or salmon. There's all kinds of convenient, no refrigeration, no cooking ways of getting protein on the go. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorites is pretty much every time we go on the road, <clears throat> we'll make a big old batch of like a dozen hard boiled or soft boiled eggs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so we that's, it, it's a whole food it Absolutely. provides like a whole spectrum of different kinds of nutrients that you need it has a lot of protein it's actually higher in fat than protein um from a caloric perspective mm -hmm. anyway from an energy perspective but it's very low in carbs um so if if you need to skip a meal but you've already skipped one that day yep. or you just find that you're really hungry i i find that a lot of times in a high stress situation like being on the road sometimes i do get hungry or bored Absolutely. or it's kind of like an emotional thing you want yep. some food yeah it's harder to fast so having eggs on hand is an excellent excellent option um some other really awesome options when you're traveling are nuts and so these are mixed nuts one thing you want to look out for uh when you're buying nuts is you want to make sure that they're not cooked in soybean oil or industrial oils uh it's best if they're dry roasted or raw or um, raw and sat overnight if you if you can prepare them properly yourself and we can provide links to that because mm -hmm. it's actually kind of an involved process but if you know how to do that that's great if you don't it's not that hard but it's it's worth doing make sure that the nuts that you get are um, not rancid mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. they taste off or moldy mm -hmm. it's better to not eat them than yep. than stuff them down your gullet so great option when you're um, traveling we also always have um some sort of protein. So in I, I tend not to have many bars around, so I will have protein. And I do pretty well with whey. It doesn't really matter if, uh, what kind of protein you prefer as long as it's low in toxins and low in junk yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and low in sugar. But this one, I, I tend to really like goat protein, uh, goat whey. Um, I do cow, well with cow whey, but most people tend to do better with goat whey um, from a biological perspective mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. terms of digestion. Uh, it's a little more expensive, but 
uh, and it tastes a little bit more goaty mm-hmm. than, <laughs> than cow does. But it's, <laughs> it's a really good option to curb hunger and make sure yeah. you're getting plenty of protein. And just while we're talking about protein powders, just a quick, a quick guideline. So whey protein is a very fast absorbing protein. It's an incredibly pure, complete protein. If you're going to use protein as protein powder as a meal replacement, whey would not be my preferred choice mm-hmm. because it is so fast absorbing and actually has a pretty decent insulinic response yeah, after you true. ingest it. It's great before and after workouts. It's also great if that's all that's available. Mm-hmm. But something like a casein, which is the other milk protein, is a great option. And if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, rice, hemp, or pea, as long as it doesn't have a bunch of other garbage in yeah. it, is good. Another thing I've recently discovered is you can buy just powdered eggs or egg whites, Mm -hmm. which is a great, just, and literally the ingredients should just say powdered eggs or egg egg whites. It's just dehydrated whole food. That is a great option as well. It's very economical. Yeah. And just watch out for those. Some of them are, especially the cheaper ones are treated at a super high temperature, which can oxidize the cholesterol, which actually is really bad for you. Dietary cholesterol isn't that big a deal. We talk about it in this course, but oxidized cholesterol is what you definitely want to avoid.